What is going on my dude? Sasha here back again with another Genshin Impact video and as always if you guys like the content please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and as always make sure to leave a comment about what you think about this video at the end. Guys, we've already done the Shenhe. It's so weird pronouncing it like that. Shenhe. We've already done Shenhe as a uh, pre-release guide but we haven't touched on Yunjin and Yunjin, I feel, falls in the category of, let's say, Ayaka. And the reason why I say that is because Yunjin has been kind of rumored for a while. We've kind of known about her. Uh, she's been, been in the background for a lot of stuff. So knowing of her and then now getting to be able to play with play with her is a little surreal. I think it's going to be a lot of fun for her. I think she could be... A very fun character if you build her correctly and we're going to be talking about what we should be looking for in the case of how to build her so let's go ahead get right into it as we know we're always going to be farming these little uh jades and all this stuff so we already know it's those but she uses the golden wolf lord stuff who's based in inazuma which is perfect you could pre-farm her already technically for me i already did this because i thought that her and Shenhe would actually use the or actually no sorry I thought Ito and Goro would use these and so I had 46 extra ready and I was like huh Goro doesn't use these what do I do so now that I got these for Yunjin I don't have to worry about that teachings of diligence you want to make sure that you get enough of those uh sorry didn't mean to zoom in there but Teachings of Diligence is going to be our book. Save those, obviously, with the Hilly Churl Mass and Signora stuff if you want to triple crown her. I'm not going to triple crown her myself, but that might come later. I don't know. She uses Glazed Lilies, which are fantastic. These are very easy to find. You could also grow them in your Serena Teapot, so that's cool. And again, the Hilly Churl Mass are going to help. Easy, easy build, in my opinion, when it comes to ascending her. Now, let's go ahead and let's get into what I think are some of her weapons that she's going to be using. Now, again, big shout out to the homies over at the Genshin Impact Helper Team Character Builds Guides that I like to use. They are fantastic. Uh, guys, if you are watching this video, please let me know if you want me to post this for other people to see. I think you guys make fantastic guides in general. Now, for the two banners that we're going to be getting, we're getting... Shenhu with Yunjin and Zhao with, I believe, Yunjin as well. So that's a lot of pole arms, guys. We're getting a lot of really good pole arm users, but this is going to be a little bit tricky. And the reason why I say that is because I feel that we might be getting a four star uh, defense percentage uh, pole arm. And the reason why I say that is because I'm looking through here and we don't actually have defense percentage pull arms we don't have a single one so i think this time around we're going to be getting a four star that works around yunjin and if i'm wrong i apologize this is just speculation but i truly truly feel with uh shinhu's new weapon we might be seeing another four, uh four star but until then we can only assume that probably staff of homa could be a good bet for if you already have staff of homa um so you would have to scale HP if you got it, and that's or not really scale HP, but I digress. You could do it like that. Well, actually, yeah, you could scale HP off of that. I like I'm a little bit scattered with this, and also I'm dealing with a lot of throat, throat problems, so bear with me. But she already scales on defense. So scaling defense and HP with her, you could run her as a support, but then you wouldn't need Staff of Homa. This is gonna be very, very tricky for her. So that's a possibility for for a weapon there. You could run Deathmatch. Deathmatch, uh, if you have two enemies nearby, attack is increased by 16, 20, 24, 28, 32%. And defense is increased by 16, 20, 24, 28, 32%. If there are less than two enemies nearby, attack is increased by 24, 30, 36, 42, and 48%, depending on your uh, refinement level. I think this might be her best bet, only because of the fact that you are getting a defense increase with two enemies nearby. But again, those enemies have to be nearby. So it's kind of tricky. You have to make sure. Um, you could go catch, which we talked about with Shin, Shin Hu a little bit. Catch uh, elemental burst damage by 16, 20, 24, 28, and 32%. And elemental burst crit rate uh, by 6, 7.5, 9, 10.5, and 12%. 
Um, I don't know if we're going to be doing too many elemental bursts with her, but we'll get into the abilities here and we'll kind of talk about that. Um, one that's kind of funny that I looked at a lot of people online that I kind of wanted to talk about it was the Black Tassel. A lot of people are saying Black Tassel would be her one of her best weapons. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. Base attack, HP percentage up to 46.9. That's not entirely pleasing. Um, <laughs> increases damage against slimes by 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80%. Oh, wait, White Tassel. Sorry, White Tassel is the one that they were looking at, not Black Tassel. My apologies. Oh, White Tassel. Sorry, Black Tassel is just terrible. Uh, White Tassel, crit rate up to 23.4%. Increases normal attack damage by 24, 30, 36, 42, and 48%. Now, you could technically do that. I could see that. Um, I don't agree with it because, yeah, that's uh, that's not good. Um, But, yeah, I digress. Uh. Those are the weapons, per se. Now, you could also make an argument for some of these uh, some of these artifacts. Because, again, if you're going to run her as an elemental burster, you're going to want to run No Please Oblige at least a two-piece. Uh, and you could, if anything, if you're going to run for elemental burst, you could run the two-piece elemental burst uh, in No Bless Oblige. And then Archaic Petra, which is for Geo Damage Bonus. I personally am going to run her the way I run my Ito. And that's going to be with the four-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams. And if you don't know what this does, a character equipped with this artifact set will obtain the Curiosity Effect with the following conditions. When on the field, the character gains one stack after hitting an enemy with a Geo attack, triggering a maximum of once every 0.3 seconds. When off the field, the character gains one stack every three seconds. Curiosity can stack up to four times, each providing 6% defense and 6% Geo damage bonus. When six seconds pass without gaining a curiosity stack, one stack is lost. So, it's going to take the best of both worlds for Yujin and be like, here's your defense, here's your geo damage bonus. She scales off a of defense, so it makes sense that this would be her best set. So, for anybody out there thinking I'm crazy and saying, oh, I'm not going to run two-piece no uh, noblesse on her for elemental burst, this is why. So I would say, if anything, if you want to run the Elemental Burst, you could run the two-piece two-piece with the Noblesse Oblige and the Archaic Petra. And then, of course, you could run her with, uh, where is it? You could run her with, uh, where, where's that? Hold on, the catch. You could run her with the catch. And, that, and you're more entitled to do that. I think, personally, her best setup is going to be right now, with, excluding the five stars, because we don't know what exactly is going to work with her. Her best setup is going to be Deathmatch, and her artifacts are going to be the Husk of Opulent Dreams. I think that's going to be perfect for her. Um, and then, of course, when it comes to your stats, you obviously have HP, you have Attack for your Flower and Feather. That's a given. You're stuck with it. For the Sands, you were going to want to run Defense Percentage. For your Goblet, you're going to run, want to run either uh, Geo Damage Bonus or Defense Percentage. I personally would put priority on Geo Damage Bonus just to make sure that you get that Elemental Damage up a little bit. And then, of course, for your Circlet, uh, you could run Crit Rate, Crit Damage. Um, personally, I think you could even run Defense. Um, but maybe that's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I... Probably depending on what happens, because let's see if we look at if we look at deathmatch right here. Deathmatch does crit rate. You could probably run crit damage, because look at that deathmatch at already highest level that you could get it at thirty six point eight percent. You really only need thirty more percent crit rate, which could be easily obtained through your level up artifacts anyway. So it makes more sense that you could run your circlet as a crit damage. Um, but this is again, again. This is only because of the fact that in my in my build right now that I'm looking at for her, death matches her weapon. So be be advised that if you don't want to run death match on her, you do not have to run death match on her. If you don't want to run the ar artifact set, I'm telling you, you don't need to run the artifact set. I'm telling you, this is just my opinion. So, but again, HP attack for your fe uh flower feather. Uh, defense percentage for your sands, your goblet, run, in my personal opinion, geo damage bonus, and then crit damage if you're running uh, deathmatch already, crit rate if you're, you know, have more crit damage, so.
I digress. It could work that either way. Now, we're going to also talk about characters that could possibly run well with her because, again, she's going to run in conjunction with her abilities. Actually, let, let's go ahead and talk about our abilities first. And I, ha I have a little page up here. Again, I'm, I don't have all this knowledge stored into my brain. This is something that I've been thinking about, but I also want to make sure I don't mess up her stuff. Yunjin's first thing is going to be called uh, Whirling Opener. So, from there, it takes up the Whirling Opener stance and charges up, forming a shield. Damage absorption is based on Yunjin's max HP and absorbs all elemental damage and physical damage 150% more effectively. When the skill is unleashed, its duration ends, and when the shield breaks, Yunjin will unleash the stored energy as an attack, dealing Geo damage. Based on the time spent charging, it will either unleash an attack at charge 1 or charge 2. Now, what's cool about this attack is that it's exactly like Beidou's counter. That's how this works. So you're going to charge up, you're going to hold it, and you're going to like basically take hits and you're going to absorb the damage and then boom, you're going to hit. What's really cool about this too is I believe if I remember correctly, if you time it just right, you can actually unleash a lot of damage right off the bat. Just like how Beto is. So bear with me on this. I'm still learning counter characters, especially with Beto. So if I get something wrong, my apologies. Cooldown is apparently from what it's reporting nine seconds. So that's really, really good. Um, and then her elemental burst deals AOE geo damage and grants all nearby party members uh, a flying cloud flag formation. When normal attack damage is dealt to opponents, bonus damage will be dealt based on Yunjin's current defense. The effects of this skill will be cleared after a set duration and after a specific number of stacks are consumed. When one normal attack hits multiple opponents, stacks of the skill will be consumed according to the number of opponents hit. Each member of the party will have these effects and their stacks counted independently. So, Yujin is going to basically be this defensive buffing, you know, character. Don't just raise the roof. Um, but the higher her defense is, the better it's going to be for your build. So just remember that, guys. So when it comes to that, if you're going to build her, I think that yes, she's going to be somewhat DPS, but she's also going to be a support. So you're going to put her in her support slot. She could work well with characters such as, you know. I guess Yoimiya in this sense. Let's go ahead and pull her up really quick because Yoimiya is going to be long distance and then you could switch to your Yunjin for the support, grab the shield, do your counter, get the burst off, and then switch to Yoimiya and start hammering on the defense. You could have an off DPS or off field DPS in Zingsho. You could run Bennett as well to help out with as much damage as you can. But ultimately, I think that Yunjin, the cool thing about her is that she could be a damager without having to worry too much about who your team is. So she's going to be one of those characters I view as a one of the better four stars of the game. And this is why I'm excited for her, because I am I actually feel more excited for her than I did with Goro. And not because Goro is bad, because Goro is meta changing. He, his team is freaking phenomenal. But Yunjin seems more all around helping all the team like regardless of element and except for or instead of just geo so i think with yunjin it's going to be a amazing time with her and we're going to have a lot of fun with her um so again guys make sure you get her farmed up we only have uh as of recording of this video uh we only have a week just about like eight days almost until you know yunjin and shen shenhu come out so definitely get those ready. Are you guys excited for her? Let me know in the comments below. And if you guys have different build suggestions for her, because this is one I'm kind of struggling with. I'm trying to get more into defensive builds. Um, let me know in the comments. Definitely want to have constructive criticism here. But this is going to do it for the Yunjin pre-release guide. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. As always, guys, I love you all to death. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to entertain you. We will be back. And the next video after this will actually be uh, a little personal. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Hopefully you guys share in the love with me. And we will talk to you guys in the next video. Take care.